<laughs> now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you husky! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Say, have you heard about it? Can you believe it? It's amazing. It's true. Yes, it's true. Every one of you are in on the offer of a lifetime. You, yes, you, you can have for your own a complete set of 35 different official Challenge of the Yukon dog picture cards. What's more, these genuine stiff back trading cards featuring 35 famous kinds of dogs, including King himself, are yours at no extra cost. There's no waiting. Hear full details in just a few minutes. When Jim Mason, Canada's most famous dog trainer, died, he left his kennels to his daughter Judy, who soon found that while she had inherited her father's dogs, she had not inherited his reputation. In response to a letter, Sergeant Preston and his great dog King dropped in to see Judy when making a patrol to the town of Porcupine, where she lived. After a cordial reception, she asked Sergeant Preston... Sergeant, you know a dog trainer named Duggan? Duggan? Yes. I know a gambler named Spade Duggan, but he operates in Nome, Alaska. He races dogs. Then he's the man I mean. I suspected he was a gambler. What about him? Well, about a month ago, he came to see me. He wanted to buy my dogs. Said I didn't want to sell them, and... He replied that he was thinking of moving his kennels to the Yukon. Oh, sort of a threat, huh? I took it as such. He could offer stiff competition if he did come into the Yukon. Why, Judy, with the fine strain of huskies you have, you needn't fear competition from anyone. That's where you're wrong, Sergeant. It was my father who had the reputation as a dog trainer. People don't think a girl can train dogs. You mean you're not selling them? People are not buying them. I may be forced to sell out to Spade Duggan unless... Unless you can suggest something. That's why I sent for you. Dad trusted you more than anyone, and he said if I ever needed help, I should call on you. I appreciate your father's confidence in me, Judy. However, this has taken me by surprise, and I'd like to think it over before advising him. If I could only prove to the people of Yukon that a girl can train good dogs, well, I could hold on to what I have. King and I are going to be in Porcupine for a couple of days. (laughs) Suppose I think it over and drop in again before I leave. Very well, Sergeant. And I'm sure you'll think of something. I'll certainly try, Judy. Two days later, Sergeant Preston called on Judy Mason again and outlined a plan whereby she could prove her ability as a dog trainer the equal of her famous father. I had a talk with the businessmen of Porcupine. I found them anxious to honor your father in some way. So I suggested an annual dog race to be known as the Jim Mason Memorial be run between Porcupine and 20 Mile. Oh, Sergeant, I'm so proud. Dad would have liked nothing better. The Golden Cup will go to the winner. I'm in favor of that. Only those dog raisers and trainers interested in fine dogs will enter. All right, Judy. The businessmen think the race will be good advertising for Porcupine and 20 Mile, and it will provide your chance to prove that a woman can train dogs. You bet it will. Sergeant, if I can win that first race, I'll have nothing to worry about from then on. My dogs will sell. I'm counting on you to win. So are the businessmen. I'd hate to see the championship taken away from Porcupine. (laughs) I'll do my best to win. And I have some dogs I think can do it. The race will be to 20 mile in return, making it 40 miles in all. You see, Judy, the proof of a good sled dog is stamina as well as speed. Of course. After the preliminaries, there'll be only two teams in the race. Each of them will take a different route to 20 mile. The dogs will have to break their own trail all the way. That will take stamina, lots of it. Certainly will. At 20 Mile, the dogs will be clocked for time and examined by a competent veterinarian. 
Well, what about the return to Porcupine? Well, that'll be for speed, Judy. Now, for instance, if you are one of the two competing teams to reach 20 Mile, you'll return to Porcupine over the trail broken by your opponent's team. And my opponent will travel over my trail to 20 Mile. That's right. Well, are you going to enter a team, Sergeant? Why, no, Judy. Why do you ask? <laughs> well, if you were, and, and King were your lead dog, I, I wouldn't even enter. <laughs> <laughs> King appreciates the compliment, Judy, but we're police officers, not dog <laughs> I'm glad of that. Now, uh, take my advice. Start working out a good team immediately. Check and recheck for the best route to 20 miles. I certainly will, Sergeant. I'll begin at once. The town of Porcupine spread the story of the race far and wide in an effort to make the Mason Memorial Race a great event. When the news reached Nome, Alaska, Spade Duggan, the gambler, called in his dog racer. A man named Frenchy Duval. Frenchy, we're entering that race. You can start working out our best team right now. Oh, boss, have you gone crazy like chicken with no head, huh? There is no money for winning the race, only a, a stupid cop. You let me do the thinking around here. You stick to dog racing. Ah, we, oui, we. Oui. But it is foolish business, this racing for stupid cop, just the same. I've got reasons, good reasons. I'll not only make a clean up on bets, but I may be able to convince that Mason girl to sell out. <laughs> if I get my hands on those dogs of hers, well, there'll be no one in the North who can beat me. Yeah, you mean if you win the race. I'll win it. You leave that to me. Just make sure that we start with a team that'll take us through the preliminaries. I get ready. We'll go to Porcupine. As soon as possible, Spade Duggan went to Porcupine with his dogs and driver. As the day of the race approached, hundreds of men from far and near came into town to see the big event. Sergeant Preston had been out on patrol. When he returned with King to maintain law and order, he was seen by one of Duggan's friends, who hurried to the Nugget Cafe where Spade sat with Frenchie Duvall. Oh, here comes Muggs Davis. He is excited, no? Muggs is always excited about something. Doesn't mean a thing. Hey, boss. Guess who just hit town? How do I know? What I'm interested in is how much of my money have you bet? But, boss, it's the Mountie. Preston? Yeah. Him and his dog are heading this way right now. I just seen him. Well, get out of here, Muggs. I don't want him to know I ever saw you. Well, sure, sure, boss. But, well, I thought you ought to know he's in town. I'd have found that out in due time. Now clear out of here and spread my cash around. Yeah. I'll see you later, maybe. See that you bet that money before you do. So Preston's in town, huh? Got a hunch we'll be seeing him soon, Frenchie. Oh, we. Oui. That is he coming through the door now, is it not? Yeah, that's him and his dog. <laughs> They're heading right for this table. Oh, that dog. Never have I seen such a great dog before. Tell him that. It'll make him feel good. Right now, I may need his goodwill. Hello, Sergeant. When'd you hit town? Late this afternoon. Still King. You have a wonderful dog, Sergeant Preston. I have ear much about him. Thanks. Meet my driver, Frenchy Duvall. Duvall. It is my pleasure, Sergeant. Have a drink, Sergeant. No, thanks. Just wanted to ask you something, Duggan. Yeah? What is it? I understand quite a bit of money is being bet on your team. What about it? I expect to win. <laughs> is it your money? Oh, no, not mine. Just a lot of the folks think I've got the best team, that's all. I see. Well, make sure you don't do any betting yourself. You'll be disqualified if you do. Oh, don't worry about that, Sergeant. I know the rules. Do you know a man named Muggs Davis? Muggs Davis? Oh, yeah, yeah. I understand he's some tin horn who's doing a lot of betting. Do you know him? Oh, in an offhand way, but... He's no friend of mine, if that's what you mean. Very well. Come on, King. Let's go, fellow. In the two days that followed, dog team after dog team was eliminated in the preliminaries. Finally, only those of Spade Duggan and Judy Mason remained to be pitted against each other in the main race to 20 Mile. It was then that the gambler Spade Duggan outlined to Frenchie Duvall and Muggs Davis his scheme for winning. He found them enthusiastic. Ah, oh, Spade, you are a very smart man. Before I come in here, I would bet against our own team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I felt the same way. That girl's team has sure got us outclassed. But <laughs> class don't mean nothing the way Spade's got it worked out. Well, I'm glad you gents give me credit for having brains. Now, each one of you know what to do. Yeah, sure, Spade. I take the second string of dogs and a sled and head for the crossing in Elk River tonight. Right. French will meet you there tomorrow. Now, get going, Muggs. Don't let anyone see you heading out of town. Yeah, sure. They won't see me. Oh, Muggs. Yeah, Frenchy? My dog team is down the street. As long as you are going to the kennels, will you drive it over there? Put the dogs up for the night. Yeah, sure thing, Frenchy. 
I'll drive him over and save you the trouble. So long. See you tomorrow at Elk River Crossing. You shouldn't have left that team on the street, Frenchy. That lead dog's quarrelsome. He might get into a fight and get hurt. Oh, do not worry, Spade. There are no dogs on the street this late at night. It is snowing too hard. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston had just attended a hurried meeting of the racing committee, and with King at his side, was en route to Judy Mason's cottage to tell her what had transpired. Snow was falling, blurring the vision as they walked along the street, and they failed to see the dog team in front of the hotel until they were abreast of it. Then suddenly, the leader plunged savagely at King, knocking him off balance. Stand your ground, King. Stand your ground. In an instant, the whole team plunged into the fray, sending the new fallen snow into swirling clouds that almost obscured the battle royal from the spectators who rushed to the scene. Hey, you must cut that out! Cut it out, I say! King, come on! Stop it! Cut it out! Come on out! Sergeant Preston was about to stop the fight when he saw Muggs Davis rush in and grab a driving whip from the sled and begin lashing the dogs. Preston called to King, and the great dog came to his side. You handled yourself well, fella. Fighting a team's no easy job. Oh, oh it's your dog, eh, Sergeant? Yes, they jumped him as we passed. Oh, gee, uh, I'm mighty sorry about that. I sure am. I, uh, I guess I better get him off the street. That's a good idea. Up, you huskies! Mark! Mark, you huskies! Oh, easy, fella, while I brush the snow off you. I wouldn't know you. <laughs> There, now you look like my dog. Now let's get on our way to Judy's cottage. I've got to tell her where we're going tonight. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Fellows and girls, listen. You're about to get in on the most exciting offer ever made by the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are offering every single one of you, and at no extra cost, 35 official Challenge of the Yukon dog picture cards. At your grocer's now, you get two, that's not one, but two different dog picture cards inside each package you buy. Think of it. You get beautiful, authentic photographs of real dogs, not on pieces of paper, but on real trading cards. These are stiff-back cards that have the same shiny, glossy finish as game cards. There are 35 different cards in all. Each features a famous breed of dog. Each picture is new. And you can get them only with delicious Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice. There are popular dogs you all know and recognize, like Cocker Spaniel, Dachshund, and Collie. There are dogs like Saluki, the royal dog of Egypt. Or the Otter Hound the powerful web-footed underwater swimming dog that hunts the fighting otter. What's more, each of these 35 dogs are real dogs, many champions of their breed. And listen to this. Best of all, you get an exciting trading card of Yukon King. It's authentic, magnificent in full color. Yes, King himself, the greatest husky in the North Country. And on the back of every card, Sergeant Preston tells you what the dog is like. Whether he's a sporting dog like Irish Setter. Or a working breed like Shetland Sheepdog. Or whether the dog is a good watchdog or learns tricks easily. Don't wait to start collecting these official dog picture cards. Here's all you do. Buy Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice at your grocery. You'll find not one but two cards inside each package. They're yours at no extra cost. And think of it. No waiting, no delay, nothing to send in. No money, box tops, or coupons. Mind you, these cards come only in packages of wheat or rice shot from guns. Two different ones in each package. Hurry, tomorrow get both delicious kinds, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. That way you'll have four cards right off the bat. That's how easy it is to collect them. So save them, swap them. Start now. Now to continue our story. Sergeant Preston found Judy Mason waiting for him, and he explained what had transpired at the meeting of the committee. A rumor got started in town late today, right after the preliminaries were completed, and the race is fixed. Fixed? In whose favor, Sergeant? In favor of Spade Duggan. Then that would mean he bought me off. Yes, Judy. If the race were fixed, it would probably mean that. It's generally conceded that your team is the better of the two by far. Do you believe I'd sell out? No, and neither does the committee. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. 
Oh, how could such a rumor get started? Because of the betting, Judy. Ordinarily, the odds on Spade Duggan's team would have dropped after the splendid showing you made. But the odds have gone up in his favor. Natural conclusion is the race is fixed. I see. I paid no attention to the gambling angle. I'm not interested in it. The committee wants me to go to 20 Mile and see that things are running on the level there. You mean the timing? Yes, each team is officially clocked there before it starts the return to Porcupine. King and I are leaving right away. Well, Sergeant, thanks for telling me the rumor. I thought you should know. Well, King, ready, boy? King is always ready where you're concerned, Sergeant. Stop snowing. Yes, it has. But enough has fallen to make it a real race tomorrow. Well, Judy, King and I will see you in 20 Mile tomorrow. Good night, Sergeant. Good night. Good night, King. Come on, fella. We've got a tough trip ahead of us. The following morning, a great crowd gathered in the main street of Porcupine to see the start of the Jim Mason Memorial Race to 20 Mile. Judy Mason and Frenchie Duvall stood beside their respective sleds, each confident of victory, as the starter gave the last-minute instruction. Quiet, please. Quiet. Now, you drivers, listen carefully. These are your official instructions. Now, Frenchie Duvall, you are to follow the western course across Elk River at the ford, then into 20 Mile. Judy Mason, you are to take the eastern route also crossing the Elk River three miles east of the ford and thence to 20 Mile. Do both of you understand? I do. We, I understand. At 20 Mile, you will be clocked for time of arrival and departure. Then, Frenchie, you will follow the eastern route, and Miss Mason, you will take the western route for the return to Porcupine. Understand? Yes. We. Oui. Then get set for the gun. Up, up, up there. Up there. It was more than three hours later that Frenchie Duvall arrived at the Elk River Crossing to find Muggs Davis waiting for him. Oh, oh, there. Oh, oh, there. Hiya, Frenchie. I was wondering when you'd show up. I have made good time getting here, Muggs. Hurry now, and we will exchange teams. Get there, Huskies. It took but a few moments to exchange teams, the racing team being hitched to Mug Davis' sled and the latter's dogs hitched to the racing sled. Then Frenchie gave Muggs his orders. Follow the river, Muggs. It is a distance of three miles, and the girl will have passed by the time you get there. Yeah, she won't see me. Then wait there for me. It will give the dogs at least two hours of much-needed rest. And that's all they'll need to win the race. Let's go, Muggs. Mush your husky! Mush! Mush there! Frenchie Duvall and Judy Mason reached 20 Mile almost at the same time, and each were handed a card bearing the official time of their arrival. After the dogs had been examined, Frenchie started out on the return trail. Judy called to Sergeant Preston as she made ready to leave. When will I see you again, Sergeant? I and I are leaving now, Judy. I'm following you on skis. Sorry, I can't wait for you. You'd better get started. See you in Porcupine. Right. Hush! Hush up! All right, King. Let's go. The trail, now beaten down by the passage of the two dog teams, made easy traveling for the Mountie and King. But Judy and her team was far out of sight by the time Sergeant Preston and King neared the Elk River Ford. King raced ahead of his master. But when he reached the ice of the river, Sergeant Preston saw him stop, sniff the air, and then wheel eastward. King, come back, boy. As Sergeant Preston called for him to return, the great dog obeyed. But he was growling when he came up. That's not the trail the porcupine fella. It's straight ahead. What's the matter? You're all bristled up. What are you trying to tell me? King could see that his master did not understand that a team of dogs had turned from the trail going east. And that it was the same team of dogs that had jumped him in front of the hotel the night before. In an effort to make the Mountie understand, he growled viciously and nuzzled the trail that was barely visible on the ice. Now I see what you mean. Sled and dogs turned east from here only a short while ago. That's why you're so excited, King? <laughs> For a moment, Sergeant Preston was unconcerned. And then the facts of the case began to shape themselves in his mind. I wonder what that sled could have been doing here. If it had anything to do with the race. And the way you're acting, fella, I think you know a lot more about it than I do. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's trail it and see who's driving it. Lead on, here. Meanwhile, Frenchie Duvall had arrived at the appointed place where Elk River cut the east trail 
and found Muggs Davis waiting for him. The rested dogs were quickly switched to the racing sled, and Frenchy was ready for the last lap of the race to Porcupine. Uh, the dogs, they are rested. They will travel fast now. Yeah, you bet they will, Frenchy. <laughs> They're anxious to get going, too. You follow, but do not let anyone see you enter the town. I'll make sure they don't. Now get going, Frenchy. Mush! Porcupine! The town of Porcupine was in a state of high excitement as the time neared for the two contesting teams to return on the last lap from 20 Mile. The main street was packed with a seething mass of humanity, watching for the racing teams to appear. Well, they should be coming in any time now. I'm betting on the girl. She's got a team of dogs no one can beat. Don't be too sure of that, partner. Spade Duggan's team may give her a run for her Here money. Here he comes! Hey, look! Here comes a team now. That's Frenchy Duval. It's Duggan's team. Come on, Frenchy! Come on, boy! Mush! Mush! Amid the cheers of the throng, Frenchy Duvall drove Spade Duggan's team across the finish line. And when he had been officially clocked, the gambler drew him aside. Everything worked out as I planned it, Frenchy? Oh, the plan, it worked perfectly. Monty didn't get suspicious of you switching teams? No. Huh? Fortunately, the girl and I arrived at 20 Mile at about the same time. While I was being clocked, he was talking to her. He paid little attention to me. Good. Where's Muggs Davis? Oh, he is following. Should be here soon. Have you told him to keep out of sight when he nears town? We. Oui. I hope he gets here soon. He's got to start collecting bets. Come on, Judy! Yeah, it is the girl. Yeah, here she comes. She'll have to be clocked for time, but we beat her. There's no doubt of that. <laughs> we. And now perhaps she will be willing to sell her kennels to you, Spain. Yeah, I think so. And Frenchie, with her dogs in our kennel, there's not a team in all of Canada that can lick us. We'll clean up. <laughs> Judy Mason raced her dogs across the finish line and wheeled them back in front of the judges to be clocked. But when she saw Frenchie Duvall and Spade Duggan grinning at her triumphantly, she knew that she had lost. One of the judges confirmed this a moment later. Well, Duggan, it looks like you're the winner. Duggan wins! Come on for Spade Duggan! Thanks, Judge. Well, little lady, it just goes to show the best dogs win. Congratulations, Mr. Duggan. And you too, Frenchie. Merci. Uh, Miss Mason, after the cup ceremony is over, I'd like to have a talk with you. About what? Now to well, award the golden cup to the winner. Yeah! I'll have to explain that later. The ceremony's going to start. Just a moment, Judge. Uh, what's that, Miss Mason? Couldn't we delay the presentation of the cup for a short time? For what reason, Miss Mason? Well, Sergeant Preston was the one who first proposed this race. In memory of my father. Yes, that's right. But he's at 20 Mile. No, he's on his way back here now. He left 20 Mile when I did. Oh, that's different. We'll wait, Miss Judy. Thank you, John. Uh, I'll tell the folks. It has been requested that the presentation of the Golden Cup be postponed wow. for a short time to allow Sergeant Preston to be present. Oh. Come here, Frenchy. We oui. Sneak over to the candles and tell Muggs Davis to shake a leg. He must be back in town by now. We. Oui. If you don't start collecting our bets, a lot of these people will duck out of town without paying up. We, oui, I go get him. All right. Half an hour passed, and the crowd was growing impatient. Frenchy Duvall, who had gone to the kennels, pushed his way through the crowd to where Spade Duggan was standing beside the team he had entered in the race. Where you been so long, Frenchy? I've been looking for months. Where is he? I don't know. I sent you to get him. His dogs are at the kennel, but he is not there. You say his dogs are in the kennel? Oui, I see them myself. There I... he is now, boy! Hey, what's that? It's Preston. We. Oui. And that dog of his, look at him. He's tearing in here like he's after somebody. Grab the team, Frenchy. Hold on to him here. No. Hold Stop. On. Separate those dogs. Stop it, I say. Touching. Hold on to him, Frenchy. Hold on, we. I'm getting down, boy. Now, what's the idea, Preston? Letting that dog jump my team. Sergeant, you should have better control over your dog. I didn't want to control him, and I expected exactly what happened. Judge? Has the cup been awarded? No, we were waiting for you to arrive. Good. Now we can go ahead and present it to Frenchy Duval. Duval did not win the cup. What? He certainly did. Well, of course I won it. I was here first and I had the better time. Ah, Duval, did. your dog team was in front of the hotel last night. Well, what of that? When I passed with King, your team jumped him. Muggs Davis and I had to separate those dogs. That's why King went for your dogs the next time he saw them, just now. Ah, that has nothing to do with the race. Let the cup be a It has everything to do with the race. King would have jumped your dogs at 20 Mile if he'd seen them there. They were there. Of course they were, Sergeant Preston. 
Duval turned in a certificate to prove he'd been to 20 Why? miles. Duval was there, but with a different team. Now, wait a minute. I was suspicious when King didn't show any antagonism toward your team. Now, see here, Preston. What are you trying to put over? Yeah. A different team, you say, Preston? Babe Duggan's team went no farther than Elk River. Elk River? That's a lie. You can't prove what you say, Preston. Oh, yes, I can. I overtook Muggs Davis on the trail, and he was with the dogs that appeared at 20 Mile. He told me the whole story, how he helped you in this fraud by using his team for part of the race. He's in jail right now, putting his confession into writing. Well, then stage this one. Judy Mason wins the race. Sure, sir. How about that, Judge? Well, I... Just a moment, Judge. You can announce the winner and present the cup as soon as I've taken Duggan and Duval into custody for fraud. Come on, you two. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. The following morning, Sergeant Preston prepared to return to Dawson. He and King dropped in at the neat little cottage to tell Judy Mason goodbye. Sergeant, you'll never know how much you've done for me and how I appreciate it. I'm glad King and I were able to help you, Judy. You know, your father is a great friend of ours. Only wish he could see that cup you won. So do I, Sergeant. Oh, I'm so proud of it. I just ran into a couple of mining men on the way here. They said they bought some of your dogs. I wanted to tell you about that. After I'd been declared the winner, I could have sold every dog in my kennel. Oh, that's wonderful, Judy. Just goes to show that I had to prove a woman can train good dogs. Thanks to you and King, I did prove it. And thanks to King, those who would have stolen your victory are now in jail. Well, old fellow, let's be going. This case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Remember, here's how to collect official challenge of the Yukon dog picture card. Simply go to your grocer, buy the special new packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Inside every package, you get not one, but two exciting dog picture cards. Yours at no extra cost. They're real stiff-back trading cards with a shiny, glossy finish like game cards. These beautiful, full-color dog picture cards feature famous leading breeds of dogs. 35 different kinds in all. Best of all, you get King himself. (coughs) Don't wait. There's no delay. Nothing to mail in, not a box top, not a single penny. Two, that's two of these official dog picture cards in each package of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Buy both delicious kinds. That's how easy it is to have four of these cards tomorrow. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the Million Dollar Deadline. The Yukon Trail was at its worst in the early spring of the year when the snow was soft and the ice in the lakes and rivers couldn't be trusted. Ted and Mary Martin had to make the long trip to Dawson or lose a fortune. And because we knew the condition of the trail, King and I went along to guide and guard them. But there was more than nature against us. There was murder in the air. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.